Welcome to the SNAP tutorial number three. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create what is often called a physics engine. This will be a very basic example of a physics engine. Um, and as part of that program that we're going to write, it's going to be a program that has the user uh, enter an input. It's going to display some sort of motion map. And it will have an output at the very end. Okay, and I'll explain a little bit about that, more of the detail as we get going. Um, so first, we've got one sprite already. This program is going to involve three different sp sprites, so three different objects and programs that are going to be interacting with each other. So to, do, to get another, I'm going to click the Add New Turtle Sprite. There's a green one. I'm going to add another one, another new turtle sprite. Uh, let's see, the red one I'd like to be facing to the right. That looks great green one let's see if we can get it to face to the left no well okay uh, it's not facing the left so we'll be able to fix that that's all right okay and i'm going to rename these sprites so the first sprite the one that's gray if you go up to the top left this i'm going to call the time sprite or just time and actually, this will be the main part of the program where most of our code is going to be uh, that's going to be controlling the other two sprites. All right, uh, the sprite number two, I'm going to call the green sprite. Actually, I'm going to call it a green car. So this will be kind of like the tumble buggy lab where we had things moving at a constant speed. I'm going to call this a green car. And uh, the red one, we're going to call the red car. Okay, we're done with that. Good. Uh, now, going back into the time sprite, uh, this is going to be the sprite that's controlling the other two. And so this is where most our main program is going to be. So we're going to start with the control block that says when the green flag is clicked. Also, just from doing this before, I know that after I run the program at least once, I'm going to want to clear the screen. So I'm going to add that. And then next, I'm going to show you how to add some variables in, uh, into the program. And basically, the idea of these variables is some. this will be information that uh, changes as the program, as time goes on in the program. Uh, and it will cause the location or the position of those two objects to change. So the first variable is going to be the, uh, I'm going to call it the red car position. So I'm going to say set uh, the red car position to something. And actually, before I did that, I should have made the variable itself. So click make a variable, and I'm going to type in red car position. I have an option of doing this for all sprites or this sprite, kind of this uh, list only. But I'm going to do all of these variables will count for all of the sprites. So click OK. I'm going to add a few more variables. Make a variable. We're going to have one that's the green car position. Make another variable that's going to be the green, sorry, the red car speed. And another that is the green car speed. And lastly, one more for time. All right, so these are variables that are going to be changing. Many of them will be changing throughout the course of the program as, as the program goes on. Okay, so it's going to clear the screen. And then the first thing I'm going to have it do is set the red car position and I'm going to have it set the red car position to negative 200 so it'll be somewhere on the left hand side of the screen I'm going to ha have it set the green car position to positive 200 so just type in 200 somewhere on the right hand side of the screen okay uh, now the green car and the red car their actual sprites don't have any code in them and uh, but I want them to move to those particular positions, the positions that I just set. So here's a way that uh, this software uses to have the different sprites interact with each other. The time sprite is going to be the main code that's going on, and it's going to interact with the other two by doing something called broadcasting. So if I go up to the control uh, tab, I'm going to select broadcast. And then under broadcast, I'm going to create a new of message that's going to be broadcast. So I'm going to go new and I'm going to call this move. So what's going to happen when this code gets to this point, it's going to broadcast the code move 
to the other two sprites. And then both of these, I'm going to put something in the code where they are going to respond to that. So broadcast move. Uh, and then I'm going to have it also wait one second before the next thing happens. Okay, let's go into the green cars code. Uh, instead of adding the when the green flag is clicked, in this case, I actually want it to move or to do something when it receives the signal move. And what do I want it to do? Uh, well, I want it to move to a specific location. So I'm going to say when you get when you get that signal, I want you to go to. I've actually forgotten which one I put where. So the, well, I guess it doesn't matter. I'm going to have it go to, and then. Instead of typing in a number for x, I'm going to go back to variables and put in go to the, let's see, this is a green car sprite, so the green car position. And then y, I'm going to leave 0. It'll still be kind of in the middle of the screen vertically. All right, and once it goes there, I'm going to have it make a stamp. So it's going to make an image of that on the screen. All right, we do the same thing for the red car. When it receives the same signal, the move signal, I'm going to have it go to, this time instead of typing in or putting in the green car position, I'm going to have it go to the, whatever the red car position is, still and still y equals 0, and then we're going to have it make a stamp. Okay, uh, so that's that. Let's go back to the time sprite. And let's see if this actually works out. So I'm going to click the flag. Good. And we'll see the red car went to its starting position. The green car went to its starting position. Um, now, one other thing. I'd like the green car to be facing the other direction. So let's see if there's a quick way for us to do that. I don't think there's a quick way of us doing that right now. So it's going to be facing the wrong direction, the direction I don't want it to, but, but that'll be okay. Okay, uh, next I'm going to show you how to, put, how to use, have the user put some input into the what's going to happen on the motion map. And specifically I'm going to have the program ask the user uh, what speed the red car should go and what speed the green car should go. So here's how we're going to do that. We're going to go into the sensing tab and we're going to grab the block that says ask. Instead of asking what's your name, we're going to say how fast will the red car move? And I'm going to give it some parameters. Let's imagine the red car moves uh, faster. I'm going to say between uh, 40 and 60. So the, the user is going to enter a number between 40 and 60. Uh, and it's going to wait for the user to do that. Uh, going back to the uh, variables tab, I'm now going to set the red car speed to whatever that answer or number is. So go back into the uh, sensing tab, and I'm going to find the, the, the word answer and drag that in there. So this is going to ask for a specific, you know, it's going to ask the user to input a number, and then whatever that answer is, it's going to set as the speed of the red car, how far the red car moves in every one second. All right, we're going to do the same thing. Ask uh, how fast will the green car move? And this time I'm going to say, let's say between 10 and 20, and wait. And then for variables, we're going to say set the green car speed to whatever the answer is. Okay, great. Now let's check our program. It's a good idea as you're writing these things to see if things are happening as you would like. I'm going to click the, the uh, flag button. It's going to ask us how fast will the red car move between 40 and 60. I'm going to type in 50. Actually, let's say 40. It's going to be on the slow end. How fast will the green car move between 10 and 20? Let's say 20. And then the program's over. We didn't ask it to do anything with that information. Um, just a quick note here. The way that we wrote our program, I could enter in any number that I want. I could enter in 900. That's clearly not between 40 and 60. Or 0. Clearly not between 10 and 20. And nothing happens. Um, 
it's possible that we could use some of the information here or some of the blocks, command blocks, to check and see if the number actually was in the range that we wanted. And then if it's not, we can have an if else statement that says, if it's not within the range, then say something to the user. You know, say, please try entering that again. It wasn't between 40 and 60. We're not going to worry about that for ours. Okay, uh, to keep going here, uh, we're now going to do something to start controlling the motion of the object. So going into control, we're going to do a repeat loop. And we're going to choose one that's repeating until a certain condition happens. All right. And so actually, if we think about the motion map, the red car is going to be moving to the right. The green car, even though it's pointing to the right, it's going to be moving to the left. And we want these things to move towards each other until the red car passes or, you know, uh, has the same position as the green car, or the red car's position is larger than green, the green car. That would mean it, it just barely passed it. Um, so in the repeat until, we're going to go into the operators tab, and there's actually two different conditions. There's repeat until the red car's position equals the green car's, or the red car's is greater than the green car's. So we're going to have an or statement in here. And then in each of these, we're going to put... Uh, the first one, we're going to put an equal sign. and the second one, we're going to put a greater than sign. And so here's the idea. Let's go into the variables. We're going to have this repeat until the red car position is either, it's a little tricky placing that, either equal to the green car position or the red car position is greater than the green car position. In either of those cases, the cars will have met or the red car will have passed you know, gone further than the green car. Okay, and then uh, let's put some things into this actual loop. What do we want to happen? So uh, first, we want the red car to move forward a certain amount. Um, so we're going to go back in the variables tab. We're going to set the red car position. And instead of typing in a number, we need to figure out a way of putting some sort of expression that will that will work. Uh, as the time keeps going on. So we're actually going to set the red car position to uh, whatever the red car position is plus however far it moves in one second, which is its speed. So we're going to grab a plus operator, or an addition operator, and we're going to say we're going to set the red car position to be whatever the red car position is plus whatever the red car speed is. So let's say the starting position is at negative 200, and the speed that we entered was 50. Negative 200 plus 50, this is going to update the red car position and call it uh, negative 150. All right, we're going to do the same thing for the uh, green car. So we're going to set the green car position to, we're going to have to add a plus operator. Oh, and actually, not the plus operator. In this case, the green car's position is going to be moving to the left. So we need to subtract whatever its speed is. So I'm going to do a subtraction operator. Set the green car position to the green car position, whatever its current position is, minus the green car speed. Okay. And one other thing just for our output, uh, the we're also going to be keeping track of the time as the time as time goes on. So each time that we move this, I'm going to have the time variable uh, go up by a certain amount. It's actually not set. I should say change the time by one. And I'm realizing right now I didn't actually set the time variable at the start. So we're going to say set the time to zero at the very beginning. So the very first dot on the motion map represents zero. And then as time goes on, or each time that we do this loop, the time's going to go up by one. Okay, two more quick things, and then we'll check this. We're going to have this broadcast. Now that it's updated the positions, we're going to have it broadcast the signal, the signal move, and then we're going to have it wait. All right. uh, and then let's just check briefly to see how this works out. We're going to click the green button. It's going to ask, what's the speed? Let's type in 50. Let's type in 10. We can see the motion maps, they're moving towards each other. That's the end of this part of the video. Um, I'm going to continue this on a next, another video. This will be